So, hello everybody. Next part of macroeconomics. And yeah, what have we done last week? Or no, not last week, on Tuesday, I think. We were talking about, yeah, the central variable in economics and macroeconomics. And this is the, oh, the grow domestic product, GDP. There we first talked about what is GDP in detail. And then we were starting about um, talking, well, where does, come, uh, the num where does come the number from? So for Germany, roughly these 3.5 or 3.6 billion euros and there we talked about the three different ways to calculate this number the production expenditure and the income approach and we talked about yeah the different parts from the production approach the income approach and yeah highly aggregated only the labor share number in the income approach. Well, and now we want to go further because we want to talk about, so to speak, yeah, our economic aims. Um, which we have and well one main aim which we want to achieve of course is something like a sustainable growth so steady and econ appropriate economic growth and for this of course we will start to look at the development of grow domestic product this we will do today and especially we will talk about the question what does economic growth really mean but at first we will want to do just a short revision of the things we have done two days ago So let's again talk about what we have done. And in the center, we take our GDP and then we, yeah, we'll draw something like a diagram to recapitulate the three different approaches in order to calculate GDP. And this was at first the production approach and what did we have there if we go back to the last time then we see we can more or less oops Go back to this slide and there we had private and public service sector together roughly 55%, um, <clears throat> manufacturing 25, 5% production and 15% wholesale and this we can then put here. So, public and private services, roughly 55. Then we had manufacturing sector, roughly 25%. Wholesale 
sector roughly 15% and then 5% are missing. And this is the construction sector, roughly 5%. But we have to keep in mind, these numbers are not calculated with respect to GDP, but these numbers are calculated with respect to grow value added. And then we have the distortion of taxes and subsidies from grow value added. And from this, then we come to GDP. Let's take the expenditure approach. And there we can also go here to the next slide. And there we had here private consumption, roughly 55% investment and public consumption, roughly 20%, and the external balance roughly 5%. Let's also take this on this slide here. So, private consumption, roughly 55%, investment, roughly 20%, and Public consumption, roughly 20%, and external balance, roughly 55%. Uh, 55 and this is actually calculated with respect to GDP. And then we have the income approach. And there we have labor share. With roughly 70% and also this number was not quite calculated with respect to um, Grow domestic product, but if you go to the following table, then it was the national income. Then we are here. So, then I, and I write it down, national income, and then we come from this side to our GDP. Here, row value added. And I think also if you think about something like an exam with some kind of uh, these um, diagrams, then it's I think it's quite much easier to recapitulate all these concepts and um, these numbers which we have learned here in our course. Okay, but then we want now to come to yeah economic aims and this is maybe something uh, special in um, Germany because actually for this so-called magic square we even have um, a, this is also written down in um, in a law during the 1960s but anyway if you look uh, what should we do in some country to obtain 
yeah, a stable framework for a good living, then you find, of course, more or less always, that mm -hmm. something like sustainable growth should be mm -hmm. an aim. And if we go right now in our actual situ situation where inflation is exploding, mm -hmm. then, of course, we have the general aim of so-called price Stability, there we will also talk about what is meant by, by price st stability because in general we want to have free markets and then it is all our own decision or it is just the decision of suppliers and um, demanders and then we have this equilibrium process in the price quantity diagram supply and demand well and then you can say if this is a free process you have here some equilibrium price why should be this stable why should we have in general something like price level stability why we are not so happy that right now the inflation rates are exploding so from this point of view we have free markets then let's uh, start the equilibrium price, uh, process and we are coming out with some price level. Why should there not much change in general over time? And this, of course, we will also talk about. And then, of course, that you have not too much tension in your society. A general economic aim should also be some kind of a high level of unemployment. And there we also have to take uh, to talk about what does high level of employment really means. Does this really mean that our aim is that everybody is working or something else? And um, in the end, there is also yeah, another aim that we are not alone, but we are in a globalized world and um, called external balance. And this is yeah, a bit uh, controversially discussed also between the economists. There you could yeah, you could, you could formulate that maybe your exports should just need your imports. If you um, remember our circular flow, there we had uh, this part that, of course, it could be the case that the value of exports meet the value of imports. But, of course, this do not has, have the, uh, <clears throat> the case. And... Is this a good aim or not? Sometimes it's um, uh, yeah, it's sad, it, especially if you look at Germany. And there you have seen um, <clears throat> the numbers I have showed you that uh, for Germany we have um, much larger exports than imports. There's a difference of roughly 100, 150, or in some years even 200 billion euros. So. <clears throat> This is, um, yeah, if you compare this with other countries in the world, then, uh, of course, our, uh, yeah, we are actually don't have um, an external balance there. And what is the reason that we sometimes talk about this also as an aim? Should we? still have this as an aim or not, we will talk about this also in this course. But let's talk maybe, or let's start with maybe the first and most important aim, what is meant by steady and appropriate, appropriate economic growth. So actually, if we go to the definition of 
our grow domestic product, then of course all goods and services and the market value of all goods and services. So only GDP would roughly meant that we take the actual prices times the quantity we have bought or we have consumed during the last year. So this is more or less price times quantity. And if we then would define economic growth just as we look at the number 3.6 billion this year uh, um, or not, not this year, uh, the last year for Germany. If we have 3.7 billion the next year, then we are quite happy because we have a higher GDP. This could have two reasons. The reason could be that prices go up, went up or that quantity went up. And if we think about the case that just like that, Everything stays the same, so we are consuming the same quantities as in 2021, and we put our inflation rate of 10% in this calculation. How much would be then our growth rate for 20, uh, 2022? Yes, and then we are quite happy. I think, of course, not. <laughs> because what matters is, of course, how much quantity we can consume or we have consumed. And therefore, if we talk about economic growth, we calculate something like a real GDP. And what is meant by real GDP, this we will talk today in detail. Because um, sometimes uh, also in some textbooks, there is then only qualitative, qualitatively written down, well, we take somehow the price effect out of the calculation, but we will do it uh, in the actually right way, how it is done and how um, all the statistical offices calculate these taking out the price effect. So real GDP then means that we do not want to calculate just the increase of the GDP by the price effect. We will focus on this quantity effect. And this is then called also a price adjusted mm -hmm. GDP. And how we make this price adjustment process, this we will do today. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, we could also, also in, for Germany or for Europe, in, uh, for Western Europe in general, think about a situation why also GDP mm -hmm. could just rise. Mm -hmm. And this is the case when more and more people come in our country. Remember, GDP means domestic. Everybody who is living here and working here contributes to our grow domestic product. And of course, if more and more people come in your country, then they are all buying, actually, of course, food every day. And from the expenditure approach, all this enters the calculation of GDP. Though, of course, if you have many people during one year coming to your country, and in Germany it's um, <coughs> since the last years uh, roughly 200 to 300 thousand persons, then also your GDP should just go up. <coughs> Would we then also talk about our country is better off or 
the living standard of every people is better than before. This we, of course, also have to doubt. And therefore, also, sometimes we talk not about real GDP, but we talk about real GDP per capita. So we just divide this number by the number of the population in our country. Because then we measure something like um, the average income in our country. So, and that this um, perspective, especially on the population, is quite relevant or was for Germany a longer time not really relevant. Because if you look at this here, then coming from the 1980s or here just from the um, <clears throat> start of the uh, reunification in Germany, then more or less until the financial crisis, the number of people living in Germany stayed more or less the same. So it made no difference in Germany, but this was only a special case. We come in a minute to France or the United States. There was no difference in calculating growth by real GDP per capita or only real GDP. But then, of course, also these refugee crisis in 2015 started and afterwards also we have, I talked about this um, <coughs> just a minute um, before, right now we have not only because of the war in Ukraine, so on average, the last 10 years, we have an inflow of people of roughly 200 to 300,000 people. And there you see also here that during the last years, we have we had a positive um, growth rate in population, while this growth rate stayed more or less zero the 10, 15 years before. But then also when we compare or if we compare countries with each other, then we can have a look at, I think yellow is France, or even the United States. And there we see the United States have roughly a population growth of roughly 1% and France of roughly 0.5%. And then, of course, if the statistical office of the United States announces in general a higher growth rate than the countries uh, in Europe, then we know, well, we have to subtract more or less one percentage point from this number because this one percentage point just comes from the inflow in the population of this country. Okay, but then let's go in detail to the calculation of what is meant by real GDP. So the relative change of nominal GDP per year has these two components. So we have one price component and one quantity component. And now we have to ask ourselves how can we can get rid of these price effect? Because as in our example, if everything in quantity stays the same, then uh, in, uh, like in uh, 2021, and we take only prices go on average up 10% this year, then we would have an economic growth of 10%. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, there would be one easy way to do it. And this easy way was actually done until 2005 in the whole world. The easiest way 
would be just that we are not minus the inflation. If we just uh, start to calculate, then we would look only at quantities. Then we say if we want to compare 2020 with 2010, then we look at the quantities consumed in 2020 and the quantities consumed in 2010. And we put, for example, just a fixed price basis on it, prices of the year 2010. Then just fix prices. One possibility. would be just to take one specific year as fixed oops prices. This would be quite easy. We count during the last 10 years every good just in prices of 2010. But this is not the way how we do it. We do it a bit more complica complicated because maybe you can think of what could be the problems if we fix some specific year. Then in order to make, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, but then of course we could also talk then let's just take another price basis. Yeah. If there would be something really special. Yeah. Or if we go a bit um, uh, further back in time. Mm -hmm. Let's take uh, then, so to speak, 1990 as the basis of prices. Then we would have a problem. If we look actually at this device, mm -hmm. if we take prices of 99, 1990, <laughs> which problem would we have? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Maybe like the production costs, but if you look at this device and you think of uh, 1990, what would be the problem in order to get the price in 1990 of this device? The device. Yes, so we have a development in products and this would mean, well, there are some products we don't have anymore and other products uh, pop up during the innovation process. So, of course, this uh, problem we can fix and this was done during these times that roughly every five years we um, switch the prices up the next five years. So, so to speak, in uh, 1995 we took as a price basis 1990. And then when we um, <coughs> went up uh, until 2000, then we switched all to the price basis of 1995 and so on. But then we have also yeah, a problem, especially when we want uh, to do research or if we want to um, yeah, make um, an, an analysis of um, historical time series, because then if we switch every five years the price basis, 
this would mean that we every five years have to recalculate all historical growth rates because all these growth rates then change also every five years. So we would not have any stable time series during history. And of course, if we look also at this device, their development of this device is really fast. So think of a mobile phone 10 years ago and think of a mobile phone right now. This is called also a mobile phone 10 years ago. But the properties of a mobile phone are really different of what you can do with a mobile phone today and what you can do with a mobile phone 10 years or even 5 years. Because the development process is that fast, especially um, if you take digital products. And therefore, because of these problems, that also the quality changed faster and faster during time, that even this um, switching every five years the price basis, we right now, yeah, calculate always, if we talk about real GDP, the quantities we have consumed in the actual year with the prices of the former year. But this then means that we always change every year the price basis. But also for every year, if we look back one year, we always yeah, get rid of this price effect. And there is also a nice um, property in going up every year with the price basis. And the nice effect is that all the growth rates are stable. So we do not have this switch in the number of growth rates um, compared to the fixed price basis where we calculate every year with the same prices. And this is also a really nice um, yeah, property because then your time series is stable. So, and also keep this in mind. If you go to the internet, and this is unfortunately quite often the case, and especially in macroeconomics, then you quite often have yeah, really short videos, about three minutes, and I explain you what is real GDP or something like this. And quite often the explanations are not only bad, they are quite often also wrong. <laughs> and even in some textbooks you find only the easier explanation with this fixed price basis and they do not define real GDP in the way how we do it uh, since 2005. Mm -hmm. And we calculate within, with this so-called chain index that we here calculate Oops, sir. So this would be then GDP, let's say today, times prices of time t, prices from yesterday, divided, and here you see just the same time index. So GDP yeah. 
yesterday times divided prices yesterday well then um, also if we go always one year back what is then the right number of these e index then you have a problem because you always need here the index number of the year before and if you need always the number before well then there is no number of course because you always have to step uh, one period back in time and therefore and this is then a convention but this and this is the nice property um, doesn't change the growth rate means or uh, there's the convention that we put one specific year equal to the number of 100 mm -hmm. and this setting one specific year equal to the number of 100 mm -hmm. this is also switched every five years because in general we want to have an index roughly around the number 100 but this is just convention mm -hmm. if we calculate the growth rates then this we don't have to do. We just also can say, let's take 1950 uh, as 100. This um, doesn't influence the growth rates. Mm -hmm. This is only convention that we change this every five years because if we want to look up these numbers, then we want to have a number which is just in the neighborhood of 100. So here, then you see, Prices yesterday times quantities today. Summing up all this, and here we have, so to speak, just the normal calculation of nominal GDP as we have defined it. Prices yesterday times quantities yesterday. And remember the uh, definition of GDP. We look at all goods and services of the final consumption in our country. Oops. What happens now? Yes. Why is this moving? Let's see. This is something funny which happens. What, what is happening here? Okay. So let's just close this and reopen it. Hopefully it worked afterwards. This seems better. Okay, it works again. But now all my writing is gone. Well, anyway, you have this in the video. <laughs> so, then we want to talk about what is growth rate. Well, of course, growth rate is then the relative change over um, during time. So here we can say that this is value today minus value yesterday divided by the value yesterday and we now take the relative difference of these on this slide defined real GDP index. And then of course we also want to know what is the price effect. 
And this price effect can be calculated via the so-called GDP. deflator and if we take these chain index then we have to calculate the price effect Oops, uh, also GDP via the relative change of our GDP deflator while if we take these fixed price basis then the price effect can directly calculate it by the GDP deflator ex in, um, itself. This is also sometimes in some textbooks written down, but this is then also a difference between calculate, calculating um, real GDP via the chain index and via the fixed price basis. But now we just want to calculate real GDP growth uh, with a simple with a simple example and there we say that we have a two goods economy this should be M1 and M2 our quantities of good A and good 2 uh, good 1 and good 2 good 1 Two, and this should be the price development over four years of these two goods. And then we just say, well, we can fix these number of 100 at some specific year, and therefore we just say, Let's take these 100 in year 2016. What would be then the, BIP def uh, the GDP deflator in 2016? If you look at this definition, <laughs> GDP deflator is just the Ratio of nominal, G, um, <clears throat> of nominal GDP over real G GDP, and if nominal and real GDP are both 100, <laughs> then yep. one, and then you see we multiply this also by 100, but this is only also convention because we want to have the index in the neighborhood of 100. Okay. So we can put then here already also a 100. And yeah, we will do it more or less by hand. Um, but I also want you that you are using software. And therefore, I implement it on the next slide. And if you have downloaded the Office version, then you can click on this. Oops. This is not working right now because I have already something open. Uh, I have to close this. Now hopefully it is working. Yep. Let's see. So, and now Excel within your office package is opening um, and then you can do this there but sometimes this is not really stable and that hopefully uh, my computer is not crashing I have put this in a separate Excel sheet and then oops, uh, So my processor, I don't know if he has enough resources right now. Uh, 
has ended. And put this together and like this. And hopefully even too large. So now we see almost everything. So then let's start. We want to calculate the nominal GDP in 2016. What do we have to do? Yep. Yep. Yes. And that's it. Great. So, and here, maybe you know this, equal sign 0 0.9 times 100 is 90 plus 2 times 200 is 400. 400 plus 90 should be 490. So, and the nice little thing is now that we have done this one time, because for 2017, what do we have to do there? Yep. Yeah, in this case, we can copy and paste. Then we um, have to calculate 1 times 100 is 100, plus 2 times 210 is 420. So, this should be just 520. 20, but we have here just written down the formula. And if we move down this formula, then also this formula here, then you go down from 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7. So we just can move this down here. And we end up just with 520, 610. And for 697. Maybe in your slides you only also put, uh, um, you, you just write down, for example, how did we calculate these numbers 697? This is just 1.2 times 140 plus 2.3 times 230. Okay. So what do we have here? Oop. So this was uh, 490, 520, 610, and 697. So how do we calculate, and let's write down 490, for example, is 0 0.9 times 100 plus 2 times 200. Now, if we identify 490 with 100, what do I have to write down for the nominal GDP index, then for 520? Or how do, have, do I have to calculate this? Mm -hmm. So I want to know what should be now inside this cell. Mm -hmm. So we have 490 should be identified with 100, then 520 should be identified with which number? <laughs> Any idea?
Yep. I think this is right. And what have you done? <laughs> Yes, because here the both ratios has to be the same. So we obtain 490 over 4, 520 equals 100 over x, our number we want to calculate. And then, of course, we obtain x equals 100 times 520 over 490. So let's go inside our Excel sheet. This is, oh, this I have to close, I think, yeah. And then we get 520 over 490 times 100 and this is 106.1 and of course this has to be done always in the same manner we can put this downwards here and we obtain 124.5 and 142.24 so 106.1 100 24.5 roughly and 142.2. What would be then the nominal growth? Mm -hmm. So here, let's take another color. So this is maybe a funny question. Definitely, because we would need the number of 2015. So this, yeah. So it would be 0 0.061, and this is 6.1%. And in general, in this, uh, because we have here these really easy numbers, we can directly look at it. Um, and in general, how do we calculate this? Yep. Yep. So in general, it would be 106.1 minus 100 divided by 100, or this is sometimes a bit faster to calculate 106, 106.1 over 100 minus 1. So there we can write down just an equal sign. So we go again inside here and calculate this minus this divided by the former year. So of course you also um, get uh, the Excel sheet uh, later on and then you also can just have a look inside the Excel sheet and you get uh, the formulas. So then let's also take percentage and let's take two digits. Okay. Now we want to calculate real uh, GDP. If we go to our definition, then here we have real GDP. So we take the quantities today with multiplying this by the prices of the last year. So again, Maybe a funny question is then what would be, let's take green,
what would be the number of real GDP, so quantities of this year multiplied by the prices of last year. Yes, again. And now what do we have to calculate for 2017? which numbers we have to multiply and to add up. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So then let's take this one. So it's 0 0.9 times 100, but it's, it is this 100 plus two times 210 and this is then I think 510 so let's even put the growth rates inside 6.1 17.3 and 14.3 6.1 17.3 percent and I think 14.3 percent so real GDP again Oop. there we cannot calculate this and now 0 0.1 in this row times 100 this one plus 2 times 210 and fortunately this is 510 and then we go down 1060 653 653 510 and 560 so now by convention, we put the index in 2016 as 100, but now we need this 100 and therefore it is called a, a chain index. We need this 100 in order to calculate the next year, because of course we cannot use these two ratios because we have we don't we do not have any number here so let's go to the definition how is the index defined the index of the following year in our case 2017 is defined as the index of the actual year this is 2000 uh, this is the 100 we have and then GDP real of the following year, this is our 510, divided by nominal GDP of the last year. So we just you have to use, or in the example, we then have index real GDP of 2017 is just 100 times 510 over 490. Well, let's go in this and the next one, I think blue, we didn't have already. So in this case, we then can calculate this number times this 510 divided by 490. So it is a bit complicated, but it's only three numbers. And if you keep this in mind, just in this way, 
in the modern world we define a real GDP, I think also it is not too hard. Okay. So then we have 100 times 410. divided by 490 uh, and this is then here 100 times 510 divided by 490 is 104.8 and this also we can copy so in here, 112.1 and 120 roughly. So one hundred and four point one, one hundred twelve point one, and one hundred twenty. So this is roughly 104.1 and here we already see well prices went up a little bit from 2016 to 2017 a bit more than 10 percent for good one prices stayed the same in uh, for the other good so we should have some price effect and therefore you also see here Real GDP coming from 100 reaches 104.1, but nominal GDP, where we still have the price effect inside, moves up to data uh, two points more than real GDP. Okay, and now a really hard question: How to calculate real uh, GDP growth? Yep. Yes, definitely. So this is always the same. We are, please, we are, keep this really in mind. Calculating growth rate is always the same concept. I think this is not really um, complicated, but sometimes um, if we ask students in exams, calculating a growth rate, <laughs> we get many, many numbers. <laughs> Okay, uh, which color I can use? Um, yellow, maybe, here. So again, of course, here, the former number we don't have. We cannot calculate this, but this number we can calculate. And therefore, this would be then 104.1 minus 100 over 100. And this is, of course, 4.1%. This we can put already inside and then we up. So in this case, we can even, since this is the same concept, I then I do not um, have to uh, yeah write it in a direct way. I can just take this formula. This were the difference of these divided by this. Copy this. Up. Enter and copy this one and put it inside here. And then down here, so seven seven and six seven one. Let's see. Oh five. Yeah. Thank you. So it's uh, yep. Yeah. So uh, this was seven seven. Do I have yellow? Oh, yeah. Seven seven percent and roughly seven percent. Um, so and now also just go to the defin definition of 
the BIP of the GDP deflator. GDP deflator is just 100 times the ratio of nominal GDP over real GDP. Let's take this color. So in this case, then I would have 100 times nominal GDP, 106.1 over real GDP, 104.1. Because here, if we go into this definition, so the nominal index of today divided by the real index of today. So this is 100 times nominal over real and moving down 100 to 111.1 and 118.6. Uh, 102, 111.1, and 118, oops, 0. 0.6. And the last one, let's take this color, this growth rate of course we cannot calculate and here what do we have to do? Mm -hmm. Growth rate of the GDP deflator. Minus the yes, so we take this number minus this number and divide it by this. So we obtain 102. Oops. Minus 100 over 100. And this would be then our 2%. Or again, we just can just can copy this formula. And we end up with two um, eight point nine and six point seven. Two percent eight point nine percent and 6.7%. So then let's do something else. If we look at the nominal uh, the, the real growth rates. So question, what is the average growth 
rate per year from 2016 to 2019. What do I have to do then? Averaging growth rates. I hope that you have done this in your statistics or in your mathematics courses. Or if I posed this question, what would you do? So we have growth rates of 6.1, 17, and 14.3. And what you should do is now, knowing that these are growth rates, you should calculate the averaging. That you have a, real, a reasonable average growth rate. So what I want to know is which constant growth rate should I put in my calculation that taking always the same number coming from 2016 growing x percentage percent 2017 taking the same number 2018 taking the same number 2019 any idea what we have to do? Yep. Minus? Well, we see that there is a growth from one year to the other years. Huh? So then you would say that uh, we have an average growth of these two years of 3%. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you take only these two, so this is more complicated. Now we have three years, but we, uh, it is the same concept if we take only two years. And if you grew, grow in one year 14% and then in the second year 17%, then on average you have grown 3%. <laughs> I would doubt this. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, then let's try this. So this would be 6.1% plus 17.3% plus 14.3% dividing by 3. Let's take this. I think we can also do it here. So just summing up and dividing by 3. So let's take oops, sum of these 3. So then dividing by 3 would be 13% or 12 point, roughly 12.6%. So this would be roughly 12.6%. But then what we have to do, then we take this as a fixed number, as our growth rate, of course, and let's put inside our starting point. Our starting point is 100. So this is our fixed growth rate, and let's start with 100. The next time would be then, of course, this times 1 plus the growth rate. This, I think, I hope you know from interest rate calculations. So this, of course, should be then 112.56 rate. And now we take the next one. So let's put this down here. You see this still? Yeah. The next one would be this. 
equals this times 1 point and the last one equals this times plus 1 and we end up 142.62 and if we look here this is, are not the same numbers so is doing Excel anything wrong I don't think so <laughs> so because what we have done wrong is what we are asking is just asking 100 times 1 plus x, our fixed number we want to calculate, three times, 2016 to 2017, 18 and 19, three times, so up to the power of 3 equals our 142 point, let's do it precise, 2.4. And then, whoop. of course, what do we have to do? We have to take 142.24 over 100, taking the third root, minus 1, equals X. Mm -hmm. And here, what we have done is uh, this is the so called uh, what is happening here? Arithmetic mean. No. And what we calculate here is the geometric mean. And this you really should keep in mind if you have growth processes. In order to be right, you have to apply the geometric mean. Also, quite often you find this calculation up here but these two numbers are only approximately the same and especially they are only approximately the same if the growth rates are less than 10%. So you make a really large mistake if you have growth rates larger than 10%. So in macroeconomics, if we go back in time, quite often it was quite okay just to take these arithmetic mean because economic growth rates stayed quite a long time, something also inflation um, in between 1%, 2%, 3% or something like this. But especially if we take right now the times where we have two digit inflation rates, uh -huh. then you really should keep in mind that you have to take the geometric mean in order to calculate the um, average growth rates. Mm -hmm. And also you see this um, when you look at the um, yeah, numbers here, because here we have nominal GDP increasing by 17.3%, real GDP by 7.7, .7, and GDP growth rate, so the price effect is 8.9%. And there you also see that the price effect and the quantity effect, real GDP, they don't add up to the nominal. So roughly it's, it's okay, but you should, in order to be precise, that it do not have to be the same, especially here in my example, where we have growth rates larger than 10%. Okay. I think 11, almost 45. <laughs>
So we are done for today. Um, and this uh, we will also recapitulate um, doing uh, some examples. Just have a look at it. I think if you practice this, it is not too hard to do this. Okay. Then see you next week on Tuesday. Mm-hmm.